так вот, блядь. Storm Shadow попадает, нахуй. Бля, какую балку распетушила, видел? А это не Химари, да, это Шторшедов прилетел. Да, да, они жарит. Смотри, тут БК не разорвал. Ибо там вон танк на атомы расщепил она. In Belarus, aviation has been used for the first time to shoot down a Russian Shahed drone. The drone once again entered Belarusian airspace during a Russian attack on Ukraine, according to the monitoring group Belaruski Hayun. On August the 29th, during yet another Russian attack on Ukraine, one of the Shaheds once again flew into Belarusian territory in the Yelsk district, the report said. According to the monitoring group, after the Shahed entered Belarusian airspace, a fighter jet of the Belarusian Air Force chased the intruder for about 20 minutes and in the Yelsk district of the Gomel region, at least two explosions were heard and a bright flash was observed in the sky. This is likely the first recorded instance where a Belarusian Air Force fighter attempted to destroy an actual military target in the sky, a Russian Shahed kamikaze drone, the report added. Russian forces continue to attack Ukraine using both drones and missiles. Recently, it has become more common for Russian Shaheds to enter Belarusian territory during strikes on Ukraine. The first such incident occurred on July the 12th, followed by similar cases on July the 13th, 16th and 31st. According to previous calculations by Belaruski Hayun, at least nine Shaheds entered Belarus in July. Until now, Belarusian forces had only scrambled their jets in response but had not used them. An increased number of Russian troops have been stationed in Belarus, which is considered Russia's closest ally since Lukashenko asked Russia for military assistance following the outbreak of protests after the August 2020 presidential elections, which Lukashenko is widely believed to have stolen. Recently, Alexander Lukashenko announced that the country had moved around a third of its forces to the border with Ukraine, but Lukashenko blamed Ukraine for the sharp escalation in tensions. He accused Ukraine of aggressive policies and of sending more than 120,000 soldiers to its border with Belarus on August the 18th. The next day, Belarus announced that it sent aircraft, air defense forces and armory to the Ukraine border. Defense Minister Viktor Krenin said Belarus was ready for retaliatory action if Ukrainian soldiers entered its territory. But Ukraine has rejected the Belarusian allegations. It denied Lukashenko's claim that Kyiv had sent 120,000 soldiers to the border. Ukrainian foreign minister said it has never taken and is not going to take any unfriendly actions against the Belarusian people. Russia might attempt a counter-offensive in the Kursk region. The aggressor aims to regain control over its territories, states Deputy CIA Director David Cohen. Cohen expects Russian President Vladimir Putin to carry out a counter-offensive in the Kursk region, but it will be a tough battle for Russia. We can be certain that Putin will mount a counter-offensive to try to reclaim that territory, Cohen said. I think our expectation is that it will be a difficult fight for the Russians. 
The CIA deputy director added that Ukrainian forces intend to maintain control over the Russian territory for some period of time. Putin, he said, is not only going to have to face the fact that there is a front line now within Russian territory that he's going to have to deal with, he has to deal with reverberations back in his own society that they have lost a piece of Russian territory. He also noted that the Kremlin leader will have to deal with the consequences after Russia lost control over part of the Kursk region. Cohen said that Russia has been making those gains at extraordinary cost in troops and equipment and may or may not capture the key Ukrainian logistics hub city of Pokrovsk. But at the end of the day, none of it is a game changer in a strategic sense for the Russians, he continued. Russian forces continue to lose control over territories in the Kursk region. According to the commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Oleksandr Sirsky, Ukrainian defenders control 100 settlements and nearly 1,300 square kilometers in the Kursk region. After three weeks of fighting, Russia is still struggling to dislodge Ukrainian forces from the Kursk region, a surprisingly slow and low-key response to the first occupation of its territory since World War II. It all comes down to Russian manpower and Russian priorities. With the bulk of its military pressing offensives inside Ukraine, the Kremlin appears to lack enough reserves for now to drive out Kyiv's forces. Putin doesn't seem to view the attack, or at least give the impression that he views it, as a grave enough threat to warrant pulling troops from eastern Ukraine's Donbas region, his priority target. Putin's focus is on the collapse of the Ukrainian state, which he believes will automatically render any territorial control irrelevant, wrote Tatiana Stanovaya, senior fellow at the Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center.